Hi YouTube, Neil here with Facelift Interiors, welcome back to our channel. So this video is going to be about how to re-upholster a Victorian style carver armchair. So originally it's a, it's a red fabric button back brown strip studded chair. So here's a video of me talking to myself without the microphone being on, but you can see what the chair looked like before. We didn't really get a close up of it, but that is what the chair looked like and that is me being an idiot. So the customer wanted this chair modernized, so they chose the fabric and then we sort of discussed options. We decided to darken down the wood. It was kind of my idea, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the best. <laughs> and then to do like a double piping to finish it off, uh, we went with a black. So this is the first time on this channel that we've reupholstered a chair like this, and we hope that you enjoy it. So if you like upholstery tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell as well, so you'll get notified each time we upload a new video. Don't forget to follow us over on Instagram as well. Here is the thingy. And then we also have a channel on TikTok. It's not gonna be there, but follow us there because we do things on it and we would like you to join us. So without further ado, this is how you re-upholster a Victorian style carver armchair and make it more modern. Action! Right guys, what you can see I'm doing here is I'm using my pincers and just ripping off the old strip studs. That's the good thing about strip studs. You can pull them all off in one go, pretty much. And I'm using the pincers to get rid of all the old fabric and you can see the foam underneath has perished as well. So that's all got to come off. So I'm just going to go around stripping this chair down, taking off all the old staples as well, if any of them are sticking up too high. And obviously on this chair, you've got very small gaps to staple into. So what you'll see here is me tearing off the old fabric, but then I'll go around again later taking out all the, all the staples because you've only got a very small small gap to staple into. Taking off the old foam and then the backing fabric for the outside back. Using my staple lifter and my pincers to lift up all the old staples as they all need to come out. Getting rid of the old foam. Just getting underneath it, getting rid of it. Then I'm gonna go around and take all the old staples out that are in the way. So in this next section, I'm going to be using a product called Paramos, which is a highly corrosive paint stripper. So hence the reason I've got all this health and safety gear on, because if it gets on you, then you know about it. I am the one who knocks. I am the one who knocks. This stuff is very dangerous. Do you know what? For now, I'll just use these till I start painting. So. In she goes. So, gloves on. I'm gonna get it quite nice and thick. And basically you want to put it on anywhere where there's a curve because that's where it's going to be difficult to get into with, with the electric sander. So we're going to go all the way up these arms. So let's put another couple of layers on here, layers. We want to get all in those ridges. Now this is the soft wire wall. We've got some hot water on there. It's hot water. Now watch. See the bubbles? So the bubbles are a reaction of the hot water mixing with the paint stripper.
So we've had to go quite hard to get the um, to get the colour out, and we've coloured it again now. So that's the new colour, but um, it's quite rough because we've had to go quite heavy on the sand. So what I'm going to do is give it a rub down with this super soft stuff, which is P1000, which is super soft sand sandpaper. We're going to get all the rough edges off, then give it another colour, then it'll be ready for the lacquer to go on. Now we're just taking all that dust off using a clean rag with white spirit. So here we're just putting the second layer of colour on after we've given it a gentle rub down. Really bringing out that colour. So what I've got here is just a paintbrush to um, get inside all these little gaps here that I can't get any colour in with the with the rag essentially so so now this chair is all colored so we're just going to let that dry and then we're going to be putting the lacquer on so I'll show you how we do that and yeah that's good yeah that's good yeah it's distracting having a thing here because I keep looking over here but I should be looking at you so now we're going to give it a nice nice lacquer using this stuff, this is spray lacquer. You can buy, obviously some people have got spray booths. We don't have that sort of, we don't have a spray booth. We don't have that much money right now. Let's start by giving this a good spray. So we're just gonna go light. So when using spray lacquer, it's always important to keep the can moving. Don't ever spray in one place, hold it in one place. Make sure it's always moving left, right, or up and down. And make sure you get a nice, even coat all the way around. What I'm gonna do first on this chair is I'm probably gonna do the back, then I'll do the seat. The springs are pretty good, but we're gonna probably replace these. So we'll replace them with proper strong Hessian web. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and cut this panel out of the fabric that we're gonna be using. Then I'm gonna put that on. So that's the back panel on and then we're going to put like a, a, like a hessian or like an, a plain fabric over the top as like a barrier. Then we're going to put on like a foam and then this was deep buttoned before. I'm not going to button it because the buttons have to go on the back. I don't really like that. So you have to have a button on the front but then also a button on the back. I don't really want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do plain on the front, do a nice big dome with foam and then we're either going to stud around here or double pipe it i'm unsure i might even do a single pipe in i think a single pipe in might look good but i don't know what color yet i haven't decided so i want to get some fabric on it and then i'll make my decision so i'm going to go and cut the fabric now for the back so you can follow me so on the back panel i'm literally just going to measure across the widest point so that's going to be about 16 by 16 perfect 16 by 16 let's go and cut that out right, so this is our fabric isn't she beautiful ladies and gentlemen So this is a velvet and it's got a top to it. Or how you Americans say, you got a nap, it's a nap. We say it's got a pile, meaning it's got a velvet feel, so the, the velvet runs down. But to us, a nap is a sleep. So the top is there. I'm gonna get some staples that aren't too long. Make sure you've got enough fabric side to side. You're gonna need to pull that quite tight. So I'm just gonna put one in there. I might put a couple in there and pull it quite tight. Then we're going to do the top here, which is the widest point. Always check where you're stapling. Just pulling all the excess out this way. It's quite stretchy, so get all of it out. Right, let's now do these corners. So now 
we can work our way around. I don't want to staple right on the edge because I want to leave space for my piping. I'm just pulling all the stretch out. Right guys, hopefully you can see what I'm going to do here. So I am going to run my blade round kind of in the ridge. So we don't we don't go too close to the staples. Right, so there you have it. So what we did is we just ran our blade round in the ridge, cutting away all the excess fabric. It's nice and tight and there's lots of staples so it's not gonna fall out. Let's have a look at how it looks. So now we are going to do the front of the back. I'm just gonna put another layer of fabric on top of that as like a protection. What we're doing is we're just going to re-strengthen this seat using new hessian. So the reason we're using hessian webbing instead of elastic webbing is obviously the springs are already there, so they're gonna they're gonna give when someone sits on it. So you don't really want to use elastic when you've got springs. So we're also replacing the old webs on the bottom and putting new hessian on there as well. Now I know the experts are gonna come after me and say oh, you should have lashed those in. And technically, on traditional upholstery, yeah, you lash the springs together. Um, but as there's hessian on the top, sort of holding the springs apart, I knew that they weren't going to touch, so I didn't lash them. So now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to put a hessian layer on here, just to go over the top, strengthen that. Then we can start putting on our foam, and then our fabric. All right. So a hessian layer is used for protection and strength, and we also put it on so the foam doesn't collapse through the springs. So now we've got this sort of set on, we can start doing little cuts. And this is a great way to practice cutting guys, cutting around rails, so here. You can tuck that under there if you want. So we go straight up and then angle and you're aiming towards the edge of the wood. Now that can go under there and go around there. So now we're going to start stapling this on. So what we're doing here guys, we're just cutting about a half inch away. And what we can do is fold that down on itself again. And double it up for extra strength. Right, so that's the seat built. So now we're gonna add the foam onto the seat. Now I used a bit of the original foam as the block, as the one inch block for the bottom to give you a bit more of a dome because the springs are already gonna do that. Now I'm using a cotton felt to fill in the gaps because I don't like it to be too harsh. I feel like if you just put a block underneath, you're gonna get a really harsh sort of dome. So I like to put a bit of cotton felt in, in the gaps, to sort of fill it out and make it look nice, make it feel nice as well. So now we're putting our chip foam on, which is our first layer of foam for the top. And as you can see here, I've switched to my metal snips because this foam is really strong and it's hard to cut around. So I've used my metal gripping snips to cut around the foam. Here we are just cutting around all the wood, getting rid of the foam we don't need. Then we're using our foam cutting knife, electric foam cutting knife, to cut away from the edge, get rid of all the excess foam. Then we're going to use our gun and staple down on the foam into the frame to give us a nice rounded edge.
So now we're going to put a layer of one inch blue over the top. So I've glued it on the top and then I'm staple it along the bottom. And after the one inch is on, we're putting half inch over the top to get a really nice feel and a nice rounded finish all around. So here I can use scissors and with the half inch, it's a lot easier to manipulate. So we're stapling it down into the little ridge. So the last thing we're gonna put on is some super thick Dacron. I think this is nine ounce, which is a great um, weight for this kind of chair. So just gonna glue that. Again on the front edge. You wanna pull this Get all them ripples out you really want to get a good pull on it i'm going to pull up nice and tight push it down like so so we don't get no gathering or ripples so here i'm using my gun to staple the dacron into the ridge as well then we can cut off all the excess with the shears so now we're going to do our back we, as you can see we've already lined it and we've put our the back fabric on so now we just need to do the, prep the front so i'm just gonna i've just got a bit of bottom in here because to cut a bit of foam that shape is going to be a bit of a pain so i'm just going to take a quick template of the shape of the foam so i can roughly cut my foam a bit bigger than the template and know that it's going to fit so this doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but it's just to give you the shape you're going to need. So that's our shape. Now I'm going to copy that. I'm going to cut it. I'll cut the foam about an inch bigger all the way around, just so I know that I can fold it under, tuck it in. See, so let's do that. So I'm just going to glue that on. So this is a two inch sort of medium foam that we're going to be using here. This is going to be quite rough, but it doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be stapling down the edges again. Right, so there's our foam. We get rid of this. So it's roughly in the position that I want it in. So I'm just going to This back needs quite a lot of careful planning when you're thinking about it because I've got to run a piping cord in to here. So I'm just leaving myself a nice little ridge to run that piping cord round. So we're just putting a layer of thin Dacron on the inside back and stapling that all round as well. And cutting away any excess that we don't need. So I'm using my original template here for the inside back to cut my fabric and I'm cutting about two inches away either side just so I've got plenty. So what I'm explaining here is I've stapled the middle and then I've pulled down nice and tight on the bottom. Then I'm good, like I do on a dining pad, I work out from the middle, push all the, all the excess to one side and do that side. Then I'm gonna do the same on the other side, then I'll go corner to corner. This fabric is very stretchy. So you have to bear that in mind. Most fabrics aren't as stretchy as this. So this one really took quite a lot of pulling to get it out. But here's just a close up of me stapling into the ridge, making sure I clear out all the ripples and all the bumps. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little nip in the front of that. And at the back as well, so I know that we're on the straight. So what I do is make sure I line the nip up with the center of the chair, staple the front on, go to the back, really give it a good pull and center up the middle as well and then staple the back on. Then like a dining pad, I work out from the middle. This is a really exceptionally stretchy fabric, so to bear that in mind. 
just going to show you how we do these cuts. So I'm just going to do these back two first and then work the rest of the fabric forward because these two are the ones that are going to be a little bit of a pain. So you want to have enough fabric on both sides. So when you come to here, at the back, you've got plenty of fabric on both sides. So I'm going to cut up. So we cut up towards the wood, sorry about my elbow, and then cut a V around the wood. So you head towards the edge of the wood. Go slowly though, go bit by bit, so you don't overcut. So what I'm doing here is making more cuts because we have to pull down so tight because it's such a stretchy fabric. So I'm just going bit by bit, being careful not to overcut. Folding the fabric under so you get a nice fold around the frame of the chair. And now we're stapling all the fabric down, pulling it really nice and tight. Because like I say, it is exceptionally stretchy. Now we're doing the same on the front, pulling the fabric down nice and tight. Stapling along, working our way towards the arms. So here I'm gonna push the fabric down into the foam and then start making cuts and just sort of trying each bit as I go. And you, as you can see, I've had to make extra cuts. Folding the fabric under, stapling it down. So as you can see, there's a little pleat left over on the front, so I'll work that out. I'll have to take the front staples off again and work it down towards the middle and get rid of it. So once you finish stapling, you just cut off your excess. Guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to attach our double piping cord. So I'm going to push that up nice and tight on there. Just get it to sit nice and flush. Cover up all the, the old horrible stuff. So I'm just... Attaching the glue onto the back of the cord and then I'm going to hold that exactly where I want it for, I don't know, 10 seconds. So the glue goes hard. So I can let go of that now. And it's exactly where I need it to be. So we did, we did try single piping on this job. It wasn't getting the finish that I wanted. So we decided to, or I've decided to go for double. I just think I'm going to get a nicer, cleaner finish with double piping. So what I'm also doing is making sure that this bit of wood here is consistent. The, the gap around the frame is going to be the same all the way around. So we finish off this chair using a double piping to hide all the staples all around the chair, the seat, the back and the arms using a hot melt glue gun. And it looks bloody. So there it is, the finished product. Isn't shit beautiful? Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.